Welcome to Compelling Conversation. My guests today are two very special people that I'm so anxious for you to meet. Uh, they are the co-authors of the book, The Bridge from Your Ask the Bridge from Your Dreams to Your Destiny. Please meet Mark Victor Hansen and Crystal Dwyer Hansen. Welcome, Mark and Crystal. We're delighted to be here. Thank you. Hi, Dush. Thank you for having us. Happy to be with you today. Thank you so much. It's, it's an absolute delight. Um, so let's, let's start by talking about the book. Um, first of all, Mark, I know you've, you've written Chicken Soup for the Soul, which went on to become a 500 million copy bestseller worldwide. Uh, it's an absolute phenomenon. Um, so, of course, to our viewers and listeners, you need no introduction. So what, what was it that caused uh, the both of you to collaborate on this book, first of all? Well, first of all, we're in love, but we travel around the world to 80 different countries, and we meet all these great people that are wonderful, likable, social, smart, and professional, but they've all lack one thing, and that is they have lacked the ability to boldly ask and fulfill their destiny. So we pray and meditate for an hour together every day, and we said, whoa, this is what we ought to do. And we got such a simple title, Ask, and no one's ever taught how to go deep in that. So why don't we do that? We wrote everything we could think of. Then we checked out all the university research, and then we interviewed 26 superstars. And now we've done a, a series of podcasts, and we've gotten, like the other day, she read 121 letters from people that are getting absolutely transformational results. So we are thankful that I think I've got lightning in a bottle for a second time after Chicken Soup for the Soul series. That is that's absolutely fascinating. So, um, so if I could if I could just uh, encapsulate the book in a in a conceptually in a in a few words, it's basically how to ask for what you want from the universe. Would that be a fair thing to say? Right. Well, we actually determined that there are three channels through which to ask, and those are ask yourself, ask others and ask God. And each of those Jewish, is, is equally important. Um, the, starting with the ask yourself part, that's, that's the reflective journey that we all need to do. And uh, most of us really don't take the time to do that. Um, oftentimes we find people who are really feeling dissatisfied with the results they're getting in life, but they never stop to figure out why they're dissatisfied, what's causing it and where they wanna be. So we say on the ask yourself part, there are three critical phases. And those are where asking yourself, where am I now? Where am I right now? And all the little sub questions that come under, under that question, you know, what do I like? What do I not like? What's working? What's not working? How am I feeling about these things? And all the, there are lots of questions that unfold under that category. The second critical phase of asking yourself is, where do I want to be? And it's really striking how many people um, fail to ever ask themselves what they really want. Where, where do I want to be? And, and, and we say, take it a step further. You know, in, you ask yourself, in my perfect idea of success, what am I doing every day? Who am I talking to? What does that feel like to me? What's important to me in this perfectly successful life? Where am I spending most of my time in this perfectly successful life? And how does, how does it define? What does it look like? It starts to open up a world of possibility and understandings for your own life, your own purpose, and where you're going. And then, of course, the ask God, you know, ask universe, however you think of that part is so important because it really is like pulling back the camera lens. So you're not just self-focused. You, you realize that you are a part of this bigger picture. And that is very healing for, picture, for people when they, when they really understand like, what is my role in this, in this world? You know, what is my greatest expression to be part of this living, breathing universe? And how can I best contribute or express myself? You know, that's, that's profound what you just said. And, you know, thinking about it a little bit, I'm wondering if the ask yourself part of it um, is something that people are truly ready to do. Because what tends to happen is um, sometimes when we dig into ourselves, 
when we ask, what are we doing? What do we intend to do? You know, how am I showing up in, in my life and the life of other people that are dear to me, et cetera? Mm -hmm. uh, I imagine in some cases, you're not gonna like the answers you get. So does this open up some opportunities for deeper introspection that might actually lead them to a different kinds of questions they might ask the universe or ask God? We think so. We say, look, look there's seven roadblocks to asking and you're hitting it well, because it is a compelling inner conversation each and every one of us got to have. I mean, Socrates framed it for all of us. He said, the unexamined life is not worth living. Sure. And most people mumble through life with nothing but distractions. We're saying, hey, look, most of us got one or more of these seven things. We get sucked into unworthiness. I'm not good enough. I can't do it. I can't be it. Who do I think I am? You know, naivete, and she's got a great story she can tell about that. You know, oh, 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 what would Dutch say if I do that, right? And you start to breathe the pattern paralysis, meaning that you have excusology and you just keep doing the same thing, the same thing on, and fear, which all of us have got to confront and make disappear, right? Fear, it used to be defined as false evidence appearing as real. And then disconnection, and we think so many people are disconnected. And, and at some levels, if you're really going for your destiny, which we're saying, look, the people that are reading this book right now are saying, hey, wait a second, I am like what you said, our, our corporate symbol is a butterfly, but it starts out, all of us are in a caterpillar. Right now, all of us are sequestered, so we're in a cocoon. And what we're saying is, this is the book of books that we believe will have you break out of that caterpillar, dry your wings, and go into beautiful, radiant, high flight. I know that's a metaphor, but does it make sense to you? At this time, so what you said resonated very deeply with me, because at this time, when we're in the middle of this pandemic, it certainly feels like we're cocooning. We're uh, cloistered at home, um, you know, restricting our social interactions, perhaps to a very small bubble. Uh, and so that, that's not necessarily a very good, healthy situation to be because we, as human beings, desire contact, desire we are we are gregarious social animals, uh, but what you said makes it really really interesting and very worthwhile because what that suggests is in this time we have an opportunity to grow within and burst out of the cocoon as a butterfly. So let's not waste the time that we have um, while we're in this in this state of being cloistered. Uh, but let's develop ourselves. And I think your book is a very timely, uh, timely uh, document, timely message for everyone. So, so that was great about the self-examination, ask yourself, what's the next step? So the next step is asking others. And um, we find interestingly that this is the hardest thing. One, well, they're all hard, they're all difficult for people. But asking others seems to be particularly hard. And we looked at a lot of the studies out there. And studies show that people, when we're, we want to ask for something for ourselves, either advice, help, ask for a favor, ask for something, whatever it is, that we go into it feeling like we're either going to be perceived as being um, uninformed, ignorant, stupid, or that we're going to appear to be pushy and obnoxious and presumptuous. And it, as it turns out, the studies reveal that none of those things are true. In fact, it, you're 80% more likely to get your request granted if you just ask, if you're just willing to step up and ask for it. And then in terms of asking, say, in relationships, if you, in business relationships, in personal, intimate relationships, people who are the best askers were found to be the most likable people. And that's the, that part is the curiosity piece, you know, being curious about what's around us, being curious about other people, being curious about what they're doing, because that curiosity can always, could always represent an opportunity that you're not seeing or an understanding that you've never had before. So, you know, we're all, we all come into this world as children being what, what we call master askers, right? No one has to tell a child to ask. They want to know who, what, when, where, why. 
they want to continue to ask for more and more and more, right? And that's normal. That is human spirit, you know, pushing us to evolve and to, and to gain knowledge and to grow and to evolve. But what happens is over time, life's experiences, whether, you know, maybe parenting, maybe you didn't have great parents, maybe school, jobs, work, you get rejection, you get shut down, you get embarrassed, you get shamed for wanting more. How dare you? You should be satisfied with what you have. Um, so we stop asking. And it's, it's the most tragic thing ever because most of what we want is available to us if we're willing to take that journey. And that's why we say it's the real, literally the bridge from um, the, the, it's the bridge from your dreams to your destiny. It's a literal bridge because we all have these beautiful dreams in our hearts. But if we're not willing to take that asking journey, we'll never discover it. Every time you ask a question, you, you might get a solution. You ask another question, you get some kind of illumination. You ask another question, you get an understanding. You ask another question of someone else, you see something you never saw. That is the way we move forward in our lives toward our destiny. And you know, that's, that's very interesting that you say that because um, again, as you say, as children, we ask unashamedly. Uh, we don't feel any obligation. We don't feel uh, bad about asking. But as we grow, uh, exactly as you said, we have these societal pressures placed upon us that it's not good to ask. And you don't want to be indebted to anyone because when you ask someone, then you know, you're in their debt, etc. Um, so that's a, that's a really powerful, powerful message. So how does, how does asking for something, I mean, there's, I'm sure there's good ways of asking and there's selfish, unthinking ways of asking. What would be a good way to ask others? Well, there's a lot of a subtlety to it. When we were falling in love and, and she came to one of my seminars and I saw her and it's late at night and we're in a VIP room and she's across the way and I've got throngs of people asking me questions, but somebody spilled red wine all over her white pants and valiantly I go over and I say, can I help you? I know where the club soda is. So that was the first question. <laughs> then I say, can I take you to dinner? Are you hungry? It's 930 and I haven't had time to eat. She said, oh, I'd love to eat. I said, but I can't stand this property because a thousand people want to talk to me about how to make their book a bestseller. So can I take you off property? I thought that was the next question. We get to this superstar Hollywood restaurant and there's a long throng of people. So a hundred dollar bill is not going to get you in. So we walk up and the guy sees how radiantly beautiful my wife is and says, okay, I give up. Who is she? Question. You don't recognize her? Now the guy's head's going people magazine and stuff. Oh, he can't, he can't place my wife. He says, okay, I give up. Who is she? Now we're both Danish. So I was goofing around. I said, she's the queen of Denmark. He starts by saying, no, she's not. And then he goes, oh my God, she is the queen of Denmark. Who are you? Back to question. I said, who travels with the queen? He says, oh my God, you're the king. Hold on one second. I'll give you a chair. So yeah, there's a right way and a wrong way to ask questions. I asked the wrong questions in 1974 when I went bankrupt. I, I, I lost all my money in one day when the Arabs said, we can write checks so big your banks will bounce. And, and uh, you know, there's no oil and I couldn't get PVC for the buildings. I built the Walt Fruit Racket Club Botanical Gardens. So I checked a book out of the library, How to Go Bankrupt by Yourself. So if you ask, how do you go bankrupt? Subconscious can't take a joke. I went, pew, pew. so luckily I asked the right questions after six months and got out of it. Great. Well, and I, can I just add to that? I think one of the important things when you're asking someone something, back to that, that original question, but asking properly, I'll always consider, you know, we, what Mark and I say is like the value circle. So when he came to me and said, you know, can I get you some club soda? When we ask someone to help us, um, it's important to think of the ways that we can provide value, whether it's in business or personal relationships, you know, it's, you, we always want to put out as much as we're taking back from, from the universe or from our relationships or anything. And when you do that, um, it's amazing how it responds back to you, you know? So even in a daily basis, it's not necessarily, you know, you're going to help just this person and that's the person who's going to help you back. But if you, if you consider this sort of value circle that every day I'm going to give as much value as I can, and then I'm going to ask for, for that value back either in help or capital compensation or whatever it is. 
then, then you live a really balanced life. And it is important to consider that. And then like Mark was saying, asking positively, you know, you don't want to say, oh, what if I get sick and die? You want to say, how do I keep my immune system so strong, so vibrant, so amazing that it can fight off anything? It's like a fortress inside of me. That's the right, wrong question versus the right question, right? Yeah, that's, that's uh, another very, very powerful message. So we've talked about, you know, the, the, the dialogue that you have with yourself, what you ask yourself. Then we've talked about what you ask others. So now let's come to how would you ask God or the universe for what okay. you want? So there's, we got a lot of simple models, but I want to give you the most simple model. The most simple model, because so many people are in isolation now and some, some levels of lockdown worldwide, 8 billion of us. The question we say that's critical is, God, what's your destiny for me? Now, you can modify it, morph it, but you ask it 400 times before you go to sleep because the mind is, what, she's a, hip, a clinical hypnotherapist, but God, what's your destiny for me? God, what's your destiny for me? God, what's your destiny for me? And what you're doing is you're probing those 18 billion inner resources of, called brain cells, and you've got to have paper and pen next to the bed because in the middle of the night, you're going to wake up and you got to tell your spouse or sweetheart, Hey, tomorrow morning, I'm probably going to wake up at some bizarre hour, like 2.58 in the morning, and i got to have paper and pen, because this crazy guy, Mark Victor Hansen, and his wife, Crystal, said, if I ask myself, God, what's my destiny for me 400 times, God will reveal it, because there's nothing hidden, but most of us are back to this whole, first thing you said today is people are afraid to ask, they're scared to ask, they're, they think, oh my gosh, I don't want to look stupid or ignorant or, or dumb, or whatever the, the self-limiting belief is, self-sabotaging belief, so if you ask God, what's your destiny for me? The inner being, the higher self wants to reveal it to you. And back to what you also said, is, is it conspires to help you get all that. I think that's, that's exactly right. Yeah, you know, that's a very, very important thing that you said. And I've, I've found that from my own experience, which is that um, when you think of something from a positive perspective of wanting to achieve something, and you go to sleep on that basis uh, with that thought in your mind, your subconscious conspires to make it happen for you. Um, ideas come to you, and whether that is your subconscious or whether it's divine intervention, whatever it is, um, but what you're looking for, the solution you're looking for happens to come up, whether it's in your dream or in your half-waking moment. And that's, that's super powerful. But, you know, I do have a question, which I think you can, you can help me with. Um, a lot of people, especially culturally, we're told, um, you know, you, you shouldn't be asking the universe for, or God, for um, selfish things. Uh, God, I want a lot of money, or uh, I want a nice car, or I want a big home, uh, or any of those things. You're supposed to want um, selfless things. I want peace in the world. I want uh, all the hungry people to be fed, etc. But that goes against human nature um, because so few can actually reach the point of not wanting anything for themselves, but rather asking questions uh, of God or the universe to provide for the world at large. What do you feel about that? Is it okay to ask for things that you might want, things that you might desire in your own life? Right. It's such a great question. And I love it, um, Josh, because, you know, we all are, again, it's kind of conditioning, I think, from whatever we've come from, you know, like, oh, that's selfish to, to want money. And that means you're, you're a bad, selfish person. You're greedy. It's not really true because money is simply a medium of exchange, right? We're trading things all the time. You know, we, we're, we're trading value all the time. And it's not always, we don't always use the, the medium of exchange called money to do it, but sometimes we do. And I think, again, the most important thing to, to understand is, is the value piece of it. Money um, is neither good nor bad. It allows us to do more of what we're doing. So if we're doing good things, doing being able to do more good is a good thing, right? Because you can do more good with more money if that is what is in your heart. If I want to support 
um, charities, if I want to go into the inner city and help them understand how to be more self-reliant, self-determining, entrepreneurial, I'm going to need some money to do that. I'm going to need some resources. It's very hard to do things in this planet that we live on without, you know, that medium of money because it's how we exchange, you know, that capital exchange is how we exchange our value and our time. So it really, I think for me, the important thing is um, to ask the right question of God, universe saying, you know, will you show me how to be my best expression every day? I want to be my greatest expression, you know, not a watered down version. Please show me how to be the greatest expression for which you made me, right? God, you know, all knowing intelligence knows what that is. And if you continue to ask that, things will come to you and you will feel more humbly empowered to be that person that you were made to be. Um, unapologetically, there's a lot to do in this world. And, you know, you can't do it without being, you know, having that strength, that inner strength, and having some resources. May I add? Please. I lived in India for a year. I assume that you've got an Indian descent somewhere in your being. Is that correct? I do indeed, yeah. What city in India? Uh, Bangalore. Bangalore, the think capital of India. I've been there, of course, a lot. But here, here's the deal. I studied in graduate school contemporary theology, and I went there, and I went, I went every the big diamond and all that. But the oldest spiritual literature in the world, as you know, is Upanishads. you agree? Yep, absolutely. The first line of the Upanishad is out of abundance. He or she took abundance, and still abundance remain. My interpretation of that, now we haven't been a Christian model, but the fact is I'm, I'm good at, at all theology, is that God wants you to be rich. In Christianity, it's John 10.10, 10, I've come that you might have life and have more abundantly. He didn't say, I want you to not have holes in your pants, so, the soles of your shoes to have holes you not be able to feed your kids. You're supposed to have more than enough. You're supposed to have your cup runneth over. And, and that's a statement of, of, are you asking yourself how, you know, most people say, well, I want more money. Well, I give you 25 cents. Now I got more money. That's not what you want. You want a six figure income, seven figure income, eight figure income. I mean, we deal with, because I'm a Horatio Algier award winner. We deal with a lot of billionaires and, and all they did is ask a superior question. And we're saying, Hey, look, it's, individualized every one of us got to individualize that abundance of spirit and it comes what crystal was saying is beautifully is it comes from the inside out you know that's a that's a really good point and that reminds me of something um oprah said in an interview um someone asked her uh you know don't you feel bad about being so wealthy in the projects and you know you've built yourself up don't you feel bad and Oprah asked a question in return, which was, which was perfect, which is, how does my being poor help anyone? Um, and she does an enormous amount of uh, good in the world. Uh, she's created schools and she's uh, given away so much of her money to, to charities of all kinds. Uh, but that's exactly the point. Um, being, being abundant is, as you said, uh, Mark, the, the, the first step to giving abundance. Uh, you can't give from an empty cup. And uh, I think that's, that's the key point. This is, this is absolutely fascinating. So the book is Ask, The Bridge from Your Dreams to Your Destiny. Um, so is the book available wherever books are sold? Wherever yes. books are sold, but there are a lot of bookstores that haven't gotten it because they're having a tough time paying their bills because they've been closed for seven months. So if you can't get it anywhere else, we humbly ask you to get it at Amazon. Not that we're trying to make Amazon richer. And then we want you to go to askthebookclub.com because our humble goal for free is to teach everyone to become what we call a master asker so they boldly grow and fulfill their destiny because what Oprah said is correct. A poor person, what good is a poor person can't help another poor person get rich? It doesn't work. Whereas I can teach a lot of people to get rich because we're obviously rich. And, it, it, you know, and we want to help everyone be better off and no one worse off. And that we're the first time in history with technology, which is headquartered in Bangalore, the one of the three bays, as you know, Silicon Bay, Tel Aviv Bay, and Bangalore Bay. I don't know if you'd agree with that yeah. simple line, but um, 
you can't come from the intellectual capital of India without believing that, I don't think. No, you're exactly right. That's wonderful, and I, I appreciate your saying that. Um, so ask the bridge from your dreams to your destiny. Um, it's available on Amazon. And uh, what was the URL to uh, the site that you mentioned? Ask the book club.com. The book club.com. Yes. So, and we'll send you an invitation to um, the book club discussion because we really want everybody to take this asking journey and become who you're supposed to become in this lifetime. We need everybody to be using their full talents and abilities um, in the greatest way that they can. And the way to do that is to follow the asking journey. Beautiful. And uh, we'll put the link to uh, askthebookclub.com um, and the link to the book in the comments below. So okay. if, you like, if you like this program, please go ahead and like and subscribe. And Mark and Crystal, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. And when this book gets to 500 million copies or even before, please come back and see us again. We love to do, do it. Thank Looking you very much. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Josh. Thank you so much.